I'm Will Hedrick. And I'm Jordan Schaffer. And this is Dog Ears and Timestamps, a book club podcast. Here's a story we've heard. Again. Again. Just do it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the freaking God keeps using it. Yeah, but he's I got keep no choice. It's a girl, too. Yeah. I don't, I still don't know. It really doesn't matter, though. Yeah, it doesn't. How was your week? How was your uh, how was your book reading experience? How was uh? It was all yesterday and today. It was all yesterday and today. Well, <laughs> I how put was it off? How was all the rest of it then? Eh, Did you, uh... It was whatever. Yeah. Been working a lot, but what's new? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Have you, uh, you been reading anything else? No, I haven't had time. Yeah. No time at all. Yeah. Watching any anime? Not even time for that. I ain't got time for Dang, anything. Dang, dude, I ain't got time for nothing. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, you because you're you're covering two stores too. You're you're from yeah. I've been your, working uh, at a different store in the mornings and then going to work regular shifts at my regular store. Yeah. So it's just I haven't had any time for anything. Yeah, they call the cleanup crew, and that's that's just Will. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just you, and you have to, to fix all that. <laughs> Certainly feels that way some days, but you know. Um. Well, that's cool. I uh, I haven't done any other reading either. I was trying to mm. for some reason I thought I did, but hmm, no, now that I'm actually. Thinking about it, thinking nothing about comes it. Out. No, I yeah, uh, it was just this book, and I mean, just like I, mean, I watched some anime and stuff, but that doesn't count as reading. Um, I know I talked about books. Uh, Kenneth, just uh, you know, our uh, I don't I don't want to call him fan of the show because I don't know if he listens. But, he doesn't. But um, he sucks. Our our two time guest, Kent, three time thrice guest. We had him on for Salem's Lot and two Game of Thrones episodes. So our recurring guest other than Caitlin, <laughs> uh, Kenneth actually has gotten into He matches into the reading. record for most guest appearances. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, he started reading some books and he's, he's getting into Stephen King. So I told him I'd oh, hop okay. on to the, the next book that he hopped on. But that'll be um, something separate that, you know, we're, uh, right, we're, we're yeah. not privy to, or subject to here. But, uh, you know, I can, I can let you guys know how it is and maybe, and maybe you can pick it up if you want. But um, I don't know. That was cool. I don't know if it was because of us at all talking about books around him all the time mm-hmm. that he's like, maybe I should just read or, uh, right. I mean, I know Sean, uh, you know, regular listener of the show was, um, mm-hmm. picking up a book and, uh, read along with us, which is, which is really cool uh, to hear. And then honestly, when your mom came into town this weekend, um, and she was like, oh, it feels like I've, uh, I talk to you all the time. I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> people listen. That's cool. Right. For, for a while, I just kind of, it was just like, oh yeah, it's my weekly hangout with Will where we talk about books. Right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, that's, that was cool. So it, um, it sparked me wanting to read more. And then, uh, and then for whatever reason, randomly this week, I heard like a list of a bunch of eighth grade books, like the eighth grade scholastic reader book mm. in a uh, book list and as they were naming off some of the books, I couldn't remember like any of them. Like a Brave New World, I don't even know if I know. Oh, what that's I love about. that book. It's a, it's like a, it's a, a utopian book, right? dystopian oh. book. <laughs> it's a, you know, dystopian in that is written from the perspective of someone that thinks that that would be a bad idea, and it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's also a utopia because everybody's happy. It's not like 1984. Yeah, you know? that sounds kind of like The Giver, too. It's like, well, I guess in The Giver, they don't really have emotions. All the emotions are put upon the one person, The Giver, and then he has to mm. like tell people like how to feel about <laughs> stuff. In Brave New World, everybody's genetically engineered. Oh, that's And dope. they all have like stations in life, and you can't go beyond that station. And everybody's just satisfied. Everybody just does... like Whatever. That, that sounds like in, uh, like in Rick and Morty when... Um, Oh shoot! I lost her name when uh, Unity ca- takes oh, over right, a community. Yeah. Like everyone mm-hmm. would have their station, you know. Nobody would raise above anybody else because they're all part of the Unity. <laughs> right. It's a a really really good book. I really really like it. Yeah, I have cool. it if you want to borrow it. Yeah, no, I might have to borrow that. That sounds really um, good. But that's a that's a great book for eighth graders. That's so much, and it's it's more palatable than 1984. Like oh, 1984 for sure. was obviously a great and classic oh, book good. that should be read, but I feel like it's hard to get people in the door with that I, yeah, and then I you need to have something a little bit easier and then they'll be like oh what's this next one? Oh, it's a little bit harder a little bit heavier so but whatever you know i, I like this sure. one so i'll like this one I if you like, just dump somebody into yeah, the ocean yeah. Uh-huh. Then- <laughs> oh yeah like swim swim home right <laughs> um don't teach them about the tide or anything i think uh the 1984 is like it's hard to force on somebody you know yeah. what i mean it's like w- when it's in school I feel like a brave new world. I, I haven't read it, but from what you've just said, it I think sounds that it like would be you, a little bit. It's more palatable. Forcing if, yeah. it onto students because they have to read it as part of the curriculum, which is already um, a difficult thing to do, regardless. Exactly, that's what I was thinking. You so be the wonder, best book in the uh, world, and people, not every kid's gonna give a shit. Yeah, like Hatchet. That book is so good, and I, I can't. I don't know anybody that didn't like it, but um, 
I, I, I remember know it was everybody forced down being our throat like, and everybody rem- like surprised how much they enjoyed it because yeah. that was what fifth grade. And I, I just remember everybody being like, God, forced reading sucks. And then we're like halfway through it and everybody was like, this is actually a really good fucking book. <laughs> yeah, I remember that was also a point when they started playing like the, the audio books in class, like just oh, to yeah. waste an hour <laughs> right, <laughs> where yeah. she didn't have to teach. Everybody that liked the book a lot, I wasn't that person because I had actually read Hatchet the year before just mm. randomly. Mm-hmm. And uh, everyone else was like reading ahead because they wanted to, they are like, this book is right. good and the audiobook is going too slow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now we have the feature of times uh, 0.25 increments uh, going up. So you can do 1.25, uh, 1.5, 1.75 mm. speed. Oh, right. For, uh, yeah. for your uh, so audio. depending on what the application is that you utilize exactly. for the audio. Um, yeah. So, I mean, if it's your second listen, you can do it a lot quicker. If it's right, your first yeah. listen and they're just talking too slow. Uh, that one ASMR <laughs> Hobbit that I was listening to. Yeah, that's weird. The only way it was palatable was like as fast as YouTube would let me play it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. But uh, yeah, you want to hop right into it? Where'd we leave, uh, where'd we leave our gang? Well, I don't even remember where we left them. Yeah, we had just gotten the past introduction to the characters, the the two twins, Uskel and Okin. Oh yeah, and uh, which is obviously like pretty much everything that's done in this book, and like in other books we've read, like in the Gentleman Bastard series, you know, we would get like them growing up and learning something, and then that would have to do with the next chapter. That happens a lot in this book as well. You know, jumping from the past to the present, and that having a lot to do with what we're about to deal with. Yeah, definitely not like putting the seed in chapter one and then waiting till chapter right. 11. It's, there's it's, some <laughs> of that that happens in this book, but, oh, for sure, but but there's a lot more stuff that's immediately important, and mm-hmm. so we learn about it in the previous chapter. Mm-hmm. Um, this being uh, where uh, Oskol and Okim come from, and just understanding that they're twins, and so they hate everything about Iridan because Iridan hates everything about them. Yeah. And so, you know, it's just to inform their character so we know there are a couple of sour pusses. Yeah. But, <laughs> Fun guys to yeah. get to know right off the bat. And that's, that's where we start. Um, so if you were reading along, that's where it came from. Um, and then, I mean, you know, all that really happens is we, we get the resolutions that we're looking for. We yeah. have the merging of the storylines, which really kind of, in a, a sense, didn't happen until, like, the last two chapters. No, it really didn't. It was just, like, the, I guess... It felt like until they literally made contact, mm-hmm. I, I wasn't 100 percent sure that they were talking right. about the like. We what, definitely um, get, uh, we def- spent a lot of time on the war for sure. That was a lot. I was yeah. like, wow, it was this more is quite than a I was bit. expecting. Yeah, this, yeah. I'll, I don't want to say too much, but there was a point where I was like, man, we're still talking about this. All right, let's right. keep going. Let's keep. I don't think there through. was any problem with any of the pacing in this book. I think it's a very well self-contained single story. I'm glad it and was. And it a goes at the story. right speed. Yeah. Like every, you know, I don't think there's any problem with the pacing. Um, it just was more time in the war than I was expecting. Yeah. And I do like how it all kind of resolved itself, too, because, I mean, I don't know if it's we like want to like effectively hop right. the war's still going on. Yeah. That's what we learned. You know? <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and this um, is the end of it. I, <laughs> my favorite thing, though, is just like the, the god of like, God, I always forget his his name. The God of Patience oh, on the, the Patience Rock. Patience and Strength on the Hill. <laughs> patience and Strength on the Hill. Um, it's just like the oh shoot, the very like it didn't do anything until the very, 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 mm-hmm. very end. Like almost right. within the last like I, I don't know how many pages, but the last like ten minutes of the book, it was like oh right. now now everybody knows. I guess that. pretty much up until the point that Hebal enacts his totally separate plan. It was like there's two things happening in this book: the shit going down with humanity, mm-hmm. and the shit going down the, with the gods. And where we might have thought it was a little bit more intertwined, at least in the characters that we're following, they're like not it. intertwined at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is fine. Yeah, uh, it's just it was just something that I didn't expect. I, I thought that it was going to come together a little bit more. I thought with the the sort of um, conscientiousness that the strength and patience of the hill finds himself having through his character growth, that he would be more looking out for even the humans of Iridan mm-hmm. uh, because, you know, they're just the humans or yeah. whatever. Uh, but then he ends up like, no, I'm still going to, like, you guys go just because I spent time with y'all, and so I, I just don't have a problem with y'all, so I'm going to give y'all a chance to go, and then I'm going to kill everything that doesn't leave. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I want to, I think, like, the last thing he says is, like... Um, it's time to tear down this tower or something like that. Yeah, but <laughs> he tells a... Uh, uh, Aolo to leave. He's like, get out of here, Aolo. I'm ripping this bitch down. He didn't say that, but he's, right, he's yeah. like, he's like, he it's time to he leave likes Aolo. Him for whatever reason. He, and he liked him from the he, beginning for the whatever he, reason. He, he still, likes him only know. because well, he doesn't protect Mawat at all. Mawat dies. Yeah, that's it, true. He, <laughs> he kind of, yeah. 
uh, he oh, likes guess, Be- he likes Eolo because Eolo is the character we're following. That's yeah. the only reason. And you know, I guess I guess the the pa- the the strength and patience on the hill. I think I guess he did do something a little more by influencing the the stones and making them say mm-hmm. yes and no and um, that that whole little shabago where uh, it like. <laughs> That was that was actually a pretty good scene at the very end of of the book. I like I like how he he did influence like the kind of final little I don't want to say fight scene, but like the little um, riddle scene almost for the for the climax climactic right. ending. Mm-hmm. There was I mean there was fighting and death and stuff, but uh, but I just I just liked that it was I mean yeah right it, before there was <laughs> yeah there was some interesting like switches going on there right mm-hmm. like so I think. And maybe I'm wrong on this. Maybe it's just something that I was thinking. But once we understood that strength and patience was there and it was put into our heads that the raven was either dead or very close to dying. Right. I, from that point on, knew that everything happening God-wise was because of strength and patience. Mm -hmm. Anytime that they were talking to the God with the tokens Mm -hmm. and all of that sort of stuff, I was like, okay, well, that's not the Raven. That's obviously strength and patience. Duh. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was super duper obvious. Obviously, we're the reader. Right. And we're coming, even in the way that the narrative is being told, it's from his perspective, mm-hmm. strength and patience. It's yeah. not from Yolo's perspective. No. And, 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 and so, like, you know, maybe we've, uh, we've obviously got an advantage. And, but I just also feel like, how could it not have been more obvious to some of these characters? Right. Yeah, no, I agree. Like, Yolo catches on almost immediately. Once, once all the questioning starts happening in that last scene, and even going into it, he had some misgivings about it, but he, like, almost immediately catches on and i'm like okay good for you so maybe he can help convince other people and he almost gets that one direction yeah not to totally believe he's like the direction is like i don't know he's talking about this rock but we should listen to yolo he's never he hasn't been wrong about anything yet <laughs> yeah for, right and uh, but I mean, nobody else can figure it out to any degree i mean the the only the only thing i can say is like mawat gets a pass because he's like blindly uh, mm-hmm. self-righteous about his his freaking cause you know like right. and then he, he does get proven right friendship. in the first whenever uh-huh. uh, okim tries to kill him and then drops dead so he's like okay so i am the least ha, 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 ha. i'm right <laughs> which is obviously a manipulation on the strengths part he's yeah. like well i'll protect you for this one thing and then when you try for the next thing you'll die <laughs> you know because i'm not going to waste my strength protecting you from another god i would rather Ooh, just kill no. the god myself you know <laughs> yeah that was nice that was like that was that was pretty good. I like I liked how it just I like in stories when the final battle it almost seems like timing has to be perfect. Not necessarily mm-hmm. that it's luck involved, but it can be perfect planning as well as timing. Right. But that that's that's probably a better word, planning. Like it, we can needs... see the sequence of events in an effective way as opposed to it just seeming like random bullshit. Exactly. Happening. It's yeah. it's all set up and you're like, Oh, that happened in the domino effect to then mm-hmm. knock over the, the huge. Yeah, like you can see the, the individual yeah, dominoes yeah, yeah, yeah. instead of just like and then suddenly an explosion happened. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not just like and then he disarmed Voldemort and they locked him up and threw him in Azkaban. <laughs> <You know>? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what an ending that would have been! <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> but um, I, I mean, how'd you feel about it overall? I mean, I we, we were just saying earlier that that we liked that it was kind of a self-contained single book. I liked mm-hmm. that it was a, a new narrative in the in the form of like the gods were completely different than gods that I'm used to dealing with. So not necessarily completely different, but but they were quite different, and uh, and they weren't mm-hmm. necessarily. Um, uh, anthropomorphized is the wrong word but they weren't humanized they didn't turn into humans they weren't um i don't know they they, they weren't humanoid so they didn't they, right. it's not like mm-hmm. uh they really didn't have i, I like that i like that they were kind of just more of like a soul or an entity kind of kind of deal i felt like that mm-hmm. that added a little bit more of the to mystery to the power and then and then with with the final reveal to all the the dummies that didn't know that it was the strength and patience on the hill at the end it was just like oh shit who is this guy the whole time right and uh, it was just like i mean that's cool it's kind of like the magic in lord of the rings how it's a little bit more subtle but it can do yeah. it can do grandier epic things that could that could change you know probably weather patterns on the entire planet like i don't, I don't know how powerful the magic is but i assume that like the way right. gandalf made it seem is like the most subtle of spell could have the most you know grand uh effects and i don't know it's just i i did like the way it was all told i just I guess, I guess to a certain point, I felt like maybe it wasn't as exciting as I was hoping for. I don't know. It, w- it was good all in all, and I would mm-hmm. recommend it, but I just, I, I don't know. I wasn't was really sure what was going on for the longest time, like we said. 
Mm-hmm. You know, we get through halfway through the book and we don't really know what's going on. Half of my prediction was true. Right. That the Raven was, you know, dying, gl- dying dead. or dead and Habal wanted to finish that and betray the Raven and then, mm-hmm. you know, move elsewhere to get away from the power of the strength of the Silent Forest, which turns out Silent Forest is probably dead too. <laughs> and so, like, I had that right, but nothing that yeah, had happened with the rest that. of the humans mattered at all to what was happening to Strength and Patience. Right. So is it Strength, strength and, and Patience was just playing or? the longest game to yeah. just get back at the Raven and the forest. Which is definitely, like, the Strength and Patience is game. Uh, literally, it's in his name, Patience right, yeah. <laughs> and Strength. Like, I'll win in the end, just, you know. Because uh. mm-hmm. it was, the, and so the, I guess the biggest reveal is that, or the the final piece of the puzzle that slots in and makes everything make sense is strength and patience becomes like this millstone or whatever. Right. And he's at the bottom and he has made it so that he is a God spoken object, like the spear tip or the arrow tip in the story of the goose God. Yes. Where it has an ability because of God spoke it to have an ability. Right. 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 Um, he's made himself that, and so, and the rule is that if somebody can turn him, then they can ask, they can make a request of him and use his power. Mm-hmm. So the Raven, after having defeated the guys across the strait and Ard Vus- Vusksha or whatever it is, mm-hmm. it's a really weird spelled word. He finds strength and patience, asks some people, you know, what it was that was going on there, decides, well, I'll just take this back with me and maybe I can use it somehow. Kind of discovers what it's used for and figures it out, right? Starts using it. Yeah. Because when the raven spoke all the gods across the strait dead, it hadn't fully happened yet. He, he still knew that he was losing power trying to complete that task. Mm-hmm. And so he starts turning strength and patience and saying and putting him onto that task. Uh, and so there's a looping effect happening where strength and patience is providing the power to continue trying to overpower the residual power that keeping the other gods al- alive, you know, mm-hmm. trying to kill them. Mm-hmm. But that's also him. So it's like a <laughs> loop of power yeah, that's yeah. just slowly draining the raven. And then at a point, outside factors drain that, like, you know, 1% left on the raven's battery, which then frees <gasps> strength and patience. And it's just, you know, it, so that's like the the final puzzle piece that like slots in and then the whole mechanism starts turning and you get like the fucking opening sequence for a Lydon's gate film. And it's just, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was a really interesting reveal. The, everything else that was revealed was less interesting by far. Right. I don't yeah. care for him and the myriad being ancient gods. And like timeline wise, it makes sense. She comes from space. He remembers always mm-hmm. being around. Yeah. But the context that's given to us for what the other ancient gods did and what they were doing when they were doing it was kind of the shallowest misdirection as to these guys aren't ancient gods because they talk about the ancient gods with reverence. Yeah, I almost would have preferred that this god had been like the strength and patience, like had used his patience to gain strength, like it had sat there and absorbed the energy of the the sun for millennia and, yeah and whatever, all the stars yeah. like the light and the energy of the sun and the stars and the we heat know they don't get that. energy like that so well i mean you get energy from heat the gods don't the I gods know, get know, energy just solely saying, from i'm offerings. just saying i would have rather that had been the case for just like a rule that hasn't been presented <laughs> well, i mean better than just being an ancient god with unlimited power well i don't even think that they have unlimited power yeah huh I don't think <laughs> <laughs> no I, I think you're right i just i would have liked something uh, I don't know a little a little better than than what they did, but I mean whatever. Yeah, I them I don't have I guess I don't have a problem with them being ancient gods. I have a problem with the misdirection applied to make us not yeah think like they were look at gods look at these ancient gods until we the point that them. they say they're ancient gods. You know. So how long do you think uh, Strength and Patience knew that uh, he was an ancient god? I would imagine that it came to him at some point in the several hundred years that he was under the Raven Tower. My guess. Yeah, that I could believe that. Yeah, it sounds good. He he, <laughs> he was a uh, so like his his final like resting spot was basically like a a mill, right? Like a uh, yeah, like just it was it just was a, a giant, giant mechanism that, that would, would turn him uh, by one his own power mm-hmm. and two the tides. Yes, which I thought was kind it was of just weird. like a giant water mill, effectively. Yeah, just extremely complicated. What you gotta make it complicated? It's for a god. 
That's true. <laughs> if you had to give a god an offering, what would you do? Um, I guess I would start with small things like, you know, just water and stuff like that. And then depending water, on what yeah. it was, you know, at some point it would, I guess, accelerate to what humans have always done. You sacrifice a lamb, shit, you, like that, you know. Would you, would you get it like nice water? Like, I don't know, nice brands of water. Uh, <laughs> um, smart water. <laughs> right. Um. Yeah, I have no idea. It's it, on. Yeah. I feel like the, just like any time a God is involved, it's like they, they've lost all perspective on everything that God, like it is just like, I wouldn't be able to, it would be so awkward. I feel like trying to worship a God, especially if it was literally physically there Mm -hmm. just cause it's so ancient, just like it, just the same concept of, 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 of a super old vampire, you know, like it just, it's lost all, you know, it's lost all the. Oh, shoot, I lost the word. I lost it all. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's lost all perspective on, on just, like, humanity and everything. And the, right. I don't know. I guess I guess it's fun to, it to would get be a, a hard writer's thing perspective. To comprehend. And, and I'm sure it's a hard thing to write, too. I, I would love to get, like, a book on, like, the ancient vampire story. Like, basically, if they had, a, like, a 3,000-year-old vampire that was like, oh, yeah, I'm still around. I'm on Silicon Valley <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> like, But uh, I don't know. I, I doubt they'd need to be in Silicon Valley. It's just it's interesting to to try and write like something so old and 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 com- complex. And I thought that it honestly, I, I kind of like how it all played out. It felt like it was done in a way that, just like the name implies, just like the God should like it. Uh, strength and patience, literally in the name, like it's not a it's not foreshadowing, but it is definitely it's like a name def- definitive only of its character. Like right. in Aragon, how it, they have true names, like that's what his true name would be, just straight up <laughs> strength and patience, <Right. laughs> but in, you know, Elvish. So, but, uh, yeah, so, um, I mean, what do you think? Uh, this author has a few other books, right? Uh, at least in the cover of the Candle version, it looked like there was a trilogy written and one or two other standalones. For, okay, that's cool. At, at least for what was there. Um, this book came out in February of this year, so yeah, you know, maybe something else has come out since then. Yeah, um, no, I'm I'm hoping it does well. I mean, it it seems like a pretty established author, so I'm sure sure it'll get some some views and stuff. Right. So I'm excited to see where they it go. It was, you know, getting enough attention that it was pushed to a point on Goodreads that it, I was put in front of my face. So for sure, yeah, good point. <laughs> At and, least uh, that much. <laughs> yeah, they, they can't hurt. Goodreads, we got to get an account on there. We got to get Goodreads. We got to get sponsored by Goodreads. Goodreads sponsor us. Um, so we'll say you, your name five times. If you go to goodreads.com, you can look at stuff. And if everybody types in the search bar dog ears and timestamps, uh, it'll, yeah, they'll be like, what is this? <laughs> why do people keep searching this? And this then doesn't exist. yeah. And so we're putting it out there. Um, dog ears and timestamps will this be sponsored by Goodreads. Gorilla sponsorship. Bank. That should be the name of this episode. <laughs> dog ears and timestamps will be sponsored by goodreads <laughs> <laughs> right yeah but i'm putting that out in the universe and um let's make it come true mm. uh what do you, um do you have anything else for the book i mean i feel like we kind of cut it short but i don't i don't, don't want to necessarily yeah. stop we, we talked about everything we kind of talked about how it all ended um i mean you want to talk nothing, a little bit more like, about Mawat the twist continues Mawat to be died. nothing like who gives a shit about what gets killed he's just annoying <laughs> which i guess is kind of cool um everything with um Oh, what's her damn name? The doesn't matter because you can't remember her name. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And I started with it was with a V or something. Yeah, the, like the love interest or whatever, right? Yeah, like she ended up. She had a really bad accent. In like the book. none. Oh yeah. In mine. None of the characters matter. Is something strange about this that book? Is, that is a good point. Didn't Nobody matter. matters in this except for strength and patience, and even strength and patience doesn't feel like a character. And I guess to to it, if I'm being the devil's advocate, that. I don't think that that's how it was meant to be written. But yeah. if it was from the perspective of a god, none of the humans I agree really would that, matter. Yeah, so I don't that, think that, that is a good thing. Yeah, it, but I don't it, know if I it think is that it makes sense too. But I think it detracts from strength and patience letting Yolo go. Right? Like, why give a shit why about Yolo? Why does he have any care? Like, it he's waited just millennia, been fun to watch millennia, until millennia until the end of his life. Finally, finish off the Raven and the God of the Silent Forest, and you know their prospective kingdom. Yeah. So why? Suddenly, like, be like, well, I've decided I like this one person, and I want him to go find uh, the Lady Vikas 
and uh, tell her, hey, let's get out of here now because it's about to go down and we're going to go back and live with your mother and <laughs> go, we'll be go, go. like It'll lesbian be lovers or whatever. And it's, and it's only because we're following Yolo. If we weren't following Yolo, then that bit wouldn't exist, I don't right. think. No. And, but then at the same time, we don't give a shit about Yolo because it's not, he, she is not a character that is fleshed out at all because we're never in their perspective. We're just going off of the perspective of strength and patience looking at them. Mm-hmm. And so it's weird. It is very weird. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. And um, it was, I'm sure it was definitely hard to write like that, you know, and definitely hard to write from that perspective. I don't know mm-hmm. how intentional it was to not necessarily make us all attached, like I was just saying. Right. But, I think you're um, right in that, that it's, you know, a story about gods fighting and really that's it. Yeah. And that makes sense. But but it was weird how we felt that, like there was the underlying human storyline, especially because yeah. there is that connection with Yolo. So it's like we felt like we should care. Even right. Strength and Patience says at one point, like, oh, I care about my subjects, you know? Right. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, so I, I don't know. It does seem like we should care more, but. Right. But then. But then it's we weird to have a character to. that is ostensibly your main character and uh, never actually feel anything about them. Yeah, what else was like that? Is there something else uh, like that? Like Finding Nemo? I didn't give a shit about Nemo. <laughs> I was like, come on, Marlon and Dory. No, I mean, right. <laughs> Nemo's story was fun. Well, Nemo just um, ends up in a fish tank, and then it's just like comic relief <laughs> yeah, for no. in between Marlon and Dory Marlon's going through the bad shit. Yeah. <laughs> adventure. And then we um, got to the dumbass fish tank and fucking Darla banging on it with her fucking space cadet yeah. braces. Those movies are awesome. Yeah. Are you excited for the live action Finding Nemo? <laughs> <laughs> that would be gonna. Uh, what would be I the wonder point? if that would even be good. It would be the same exact thing, like all the other ones have been, except it has to only be CGI, except for the one time that we see a human. Yeah, running up to slap the fish tank. Right. <laughs> yeah, it would. Uh, I mean, the Lion King was good, but um. Yeah, it doesn't really. It, how how crazy do you need to go with CGI to CGI a bunch I think of fish that, doing yeah, the I same don't, exact thing? And I don't, I don't really get the Lion King remake because it's like they don't do anything different. No, it's, it's the, the same, same story. It's, the same it's just movie. like a muscle flex. Like, hey, look at how we can make this animation look almost as if these are actual lions. I liked it because I feel like it. I mean, I'm sure kids don't really care how good the quality is of the animation that they're looking at, but I liked right. it because I felt like it was trying to bring back um, that for a new generation. You know, like how it was, you know, like all the 90s kids obsessed over all the Disney, you know, the, the Disney era. I felt like that was kind of just like, hey, let's get the new, like, let's, I mean, obviously it was a muscle flex because they're using the same movie, same storyline mm-hmm. to get, to do the, exactly what they did to the kids in the 90s to the kids of the the new 90s, I yeah, guess. Yeah, the kids like, still love those old movies and animation because the animation was that good then, too. That's true. No, that's and what, the, yeah. a big difference, at least, and, you know, a, a big failure of the remake of The Lion King is that the, because they look like real lions, there's, like, not really... A, if, if I had never seen The Lion King, mm-hmm. I imagine, obviously, I can't put myself in that headspace because I've seen The Lion King probably a hundred times. If I had never seen The Lion King and this was going to be my first introduction to that story i wouldn't care half as much as i cared about the other ones because in the animated lion king you can animate those lions to have emotion whereas in this they're just lions it was good though i said, <laughs> I, I really liked it but i would i can project those emotions that i already know the characters exactly. have onto that's, them that's probably because true. i've seen the other movie a hundred times yeah you and know? that's probably something i didn't realize as i was watching and so i think that that is like you know, with the live action remakes of like Beauty and the Beast and the other ones, well, well, there's humans in there and humans obviously have emotions and we can read human emotions. Uh, none of them are good either, but at least there's that. In this singular instance, it just doesn't make sense to do it because you are then just like watching Planet Earth, I guess, but fun. But trying to have a human story and it with doesn't singing. have the same effect. And so then it makes it more so transparent that it's just a money grab and nobody at Disney actually cares about that movie. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I enjoyed it. I liked it. So, um, I don't know. Hit him. Hit him with something else juicy. What do you What do you think about the book? Like something else juicy from the book. Hmm. Give me something juicy. Let me see. Let I can't even. Think. I'm trying to think of something juicy myself. I don't know. I don't think there's really anything else. Yeah, I mean, we hit we hit all the juicy, <laughs> juicy parts. I thought. 
Yeah, because like we said, we spent a shit ton of time in the war to ultimately find out that the war never ended. Yeah, it's still going on. Um, the strength and patience. It is. ends with strength and patience defeating, getting Mawat to kill the Raven by destroying the cogs in the mill that he's on. And then he, and then he's and then super he god. tears everything down, and he uh, talks about how now uh, the, the the myriad and all our buddies are sailing over on ships at that moment. Now mm-hmm. that the power of the Raven is gone, and they're no longer being sapped of their strength yeah. in his attempt to finish killing them. And uh, that's it. That's all that happens. There's some distraction that happens in the south where the tell yeah. break through Iridan's so, forces because of Lord uh, Ions or whatever his fucking name is, the dickwad that didn't get along with Mawat and was just yeah. like really brash and made bad decisions. Guess what makes a brash and bad decision, <laughs> which allows the tell to get by them. And so Iridan is just like falling apart. And to any sort of degree that some of some or all of that is by design by the strength and patience on the hill. Well, so there could be a sequel, but it would be, it it was, I think it would lose sense. all the effect of yeah. having the story told there's no from point. strength and patience. Because there's no characters that we give a shit about. Right. And strength and patience story is done. Right. He didn't even care about the war. He just had a personal vendetta against the Raven and the guy that's on the force because they tried to kill him. Right. And now he's killed them. So it's over. <laughs> Full circle. All done. Yeah. So they just suddenly dive back into this universe with either characters that we don't care about or new characters that we don't care about. It would right. be really bizarre. Hmm. Well, um, you want to bring an old character back that we do care about? <laughs> do we? We don't know anything about any of them. Uh, but it is an old character. And for our year anniversary. Which is next week. Which is next week. Plus um, or minus one day. Yeah. We are going to start reading uh brandon sanderson's warbreaker yes the book that was on the table for at least the first three book choosings and uh, just never won for some reason we decided that we're going to go ahead and read it for the anniversary episode yeah so that'll be next week not not today but um we're deciding for that episode it'll be Mm -hmm. yeah so that'll be nice kind of poetic pick it up if you haven't already for whatever reason uh it was almost always in our top two Whenever yeah. we were trying to figure out which book to read. It was probably just the appeal of something new every time that was like, oh, no, let's give that one a shot. Right, you yeah. know? And so, no, I'm looking forward to it. I know that there is an Audible version uh, as well, so I'm going to download that here right uh, in a minute. But It's 600 and some odd pages, 650-ish pages, I think. Yeah, like 60 chapters, and, uh, you said, right? Yeah, 60 chapters. And now that counts the prologue and the epilogue. So there's 58 core chapters, 58 chapters that are numbered. But we're um, reading the We're going to read 20 chapters, 20 prologue. chapters, 20 chapters. We're going to do this in three episodes. And the reason I mention that is so that you don't, you read the prologue through chapter 19, don't read chapter 20, and then you read chapter 20 through chapter 39, and then 40 through the epilogue. Right. And so that's that's how our breakdown is going to be. Awesome. Cool. Well, uh, you know how to find us. Uh, Instagram and Twitter um, at ears underscore stamps mm-hmm. and dog ears and timestamps at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. And then we're out every week with our, you know, book club updates. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you on next week, next Wednesday with uh, Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. And finally, uh, finally here. Yes. Time for it. I'm Will Hedrick. I'm Jordan Schaffer. This is dog ears and timestamps. Was Flubber a Nick production? Seems like it should have been. Hmm. But if I had to guess, I'd be like, no, Disney. Disney had all the high budget, but then it's like, no, Disney also had, like, get a clue. I bet that Flubber is Disney. Flubber. You think? Get a clue. There's nothing you can do. Something like that. Wow. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's a Disney film. Boom. But Nick, 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 Nick should have used that movie. 1997. Oh. Bruh, I was barely six. Or <laughs> s- yeah, barely six, bruh. Barely. Barely six. Unless it was in January, then I was almost six. <laughs> 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 January or February. February. <laughs>
How dare you ask Feb if he's airy? <sighs> well, 